Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions here. I just wanted to go over the licensing model today of Power Automate and Power Apps. I want to say that I am not a licensing expert, but I just want to help some people understand the licensing of Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, this question comes up uh, at least 10 times a month almost for me, you know, people asking about the license model of Power Apps and the Power Platform. So this video is mainly just for a discussion for us to uh, talk about our licensing. Um, I'm going to let you know what I know and what I've experienced, um, but the licensing model by Microsoft is so complex that normally when you contact Microsoft, they don't even know their own licensing model. They have to get someone who's almost a licensed engineer to talk about their own licensing model uh, using the Power Platform and SharePoint. If you go to this site right here, and I'll put it in the description, uh, the new licensing options for Power Automate Standalone, actually at the bottom, they have a licensing guide. And I, I've pretty much already opened that up, but if you click on the licensing guide or you download it, uh, this is it. And so it goes over Power Apps, Power Automate, Virtual Agents. So that actually uh, brings a good point uh, is First off, before we talk about the licensing of the Power Platform, what is the Power Platform? So the Power Platform includes Power BI, Power Apps, Power Portal, Power Apps Portals, Power Automate, Power Automate Desktop, which is now free with uh, Windows 10, uh, Power Virtual Agents, and an AI Builder. So Power BI is for your reporting. Um, I think most people are familiar with Power BI. And then you have Power Apps, which are applications used for internally. Um, many people want to create apps and use them externally, but Power Apps is mainly for internal use of your organization. If you want external use, you can use Power Apps Portals. Now, Power Apps Portals gets very complex uh, very quickly and ends up, you know, requiring coding, much more coding than the low code of Power Apps. Um, I did have someone in Microsoft actually recommend to me to embed a Power App inside a, a Power Apps portal, but you know what? It still requires licensing and people externally still need a license in order to use that Power Apps inside a Power Apps portal, so it actually doesn't work. Um, the next thing is Power Automate, which is actually your Microsoft Flows, so this is your flows of your business or if you're used to it, it used to be SharePoint designer flows um, kind of it's morphed into Power Automate. Um, you have your Power Automate desktop which is now free and then you also have your Power Virtual Agents so this is chatbots maybe you guys are used to it if uh, you know you had a problem at Amazon and you started talking to the bot there the bot will go through certain questions for you and then finally you'll be like no I need to talk to somebody real so uh, that's what chatbots are and then AI Builder, this is for AI capabilities. I'm not very familiar with it. It's new. Um, I would like to learn more with it, but if anybody has any information about the AI Builder, um, please feel free to share it. So that's what the Power Platform is. Another one that I tend using a lot that's not part of uh, Power Platform is Microsoft Forms, actually. Microsoft Forms is what I use a lot of the time externally. Uh, it does come with basic functionality, but um, instead of going to Power Apps portals, I can create a form in you know five minutes, and then you use Power Automate to push that data to SharePoint. So let me just go through some of the licensing with you here. So with every Office 365 license, whether it's E1, E3, E5, G1, if you're doing government, G3, G5. Um, Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. And if I search for included with Office 365, I can show you what comes with that. So Power Apps uh, right here, use rights included with Office 365. It includes the standard connectors only. And then you have your premium and custom connectors. So any custom connectors that you may need to an API or premium connectors they will not work with uh, 
your standard Office 365 licensing. Now you can mix licensing together. You know, some of your users could have the premium connector capacity. All of your users don't have to have premium. Uh, some users could have the standard connector included with Office 365. Um, it's not all or nothing. Microsoft will work with you if you want some of the population of your organization to have premium connectors and some to not. Um, it also gives you the power to you know, use Power Apps and Power Automate together. You do have that. Um, and then I'm going to show you again. Now Power Automate. So now we have Power Automate included with Office 365 licenses. Once again, you get your automated instant and scheduled flows. And now we can even talk about desktop flows. So desktop flows come free with Windows 10. Um, and then once again, your standard connectors and your premium and custom connectors do not come included with standard Office 365 licensing. So why would you get a Power Apps premium licensing model? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, if you need a larger capacity of Power Apps, if you need to use the premium connectors, obviously, uh, if you want to use model driven apps, uh, you would get the standalone Power Apps licensing. See in Power Apps, in our Canvas model app, if we go to data and then add data, you can see our connectors here on the left side. So the ones that you really uh, could use without premium connections are Excel Online to Business. Uh, we also have uh, your Microsoft Outlook, your email, uh, Office 365 users, you can connect to that, get the email, uh, username of whoever's connecting, OneDrive for business, uh, Planner you can connect to, and SharePoint. And it looks like you can even get into Twitter without premium licensing capacity. I'm not sure why they have Skype for business on here. I guess some people still have Skype. Um, you have your Outlook tasks also. But if you wanted the premium license capacity, you can see here with the little gem icon here, that means that you need the premium licensing of Power Apps in order to use these connectors to these APIs. So things um, that I have used are SQL. So I have needed uh, premium connectors to use the SQL connector. Also another one was uh, any custom connectors that you create. So I created some connect, uh, custom connectors to Azure AD. Um, those also need the premium license capacity. Um, so pretty much you don't really need the premium license capacity unless you're really trying to uh, connect to something like Jira. Uh, Jira does require the premium license capacity. Uh, there's a few others in here that I could relate to, but there's, there's so many in here. Here's MySQL. Uh, you'll have to look through yourself to see if you need the premium license capacity. Let's look at the same thing on the Power Automate side. So if we go to Power Automate and we go to Connectors, you can see here that we have premium connectors that require the premium licensing of Power Automate. Uh, you can get by without it, but you know if you needed Salesforce, if you needed to connect to Word, um, it's pretty similar to Power Apps. But there's a lot of premium connectors here that would require the premium licensing. <clears throat> SharePoint is definitely my most used in Power Automate and then would uh, next would come email, so connecting to Outlook. Um, you can connect a Power Automate to a Power Apps without premium connectors. As soon as you need something uh, more complex, that's when the premium licensing comes into play. I don't know what half of these uh, APIs or connectors are too, but I'm guessing they're popular. Looks like you can connect to LinkedIn without premium. That could be useful if you wanted to pull in someone's credentials from LinkedIn. What I use personally actually is the Office 365 developer subscription. So this is for developing and getting used to things. Um, it includes all of these capabilities um, with my Office 365. So this is where I'm actually able to um, 
turn on preview features, turn on first release features. Um, I can get things much faster and I can develop and create things in my own developing environment. So if you had a few developers in your organization and you wanted them to start getting familiar with any of the uh, new functionalities or any of the functionalities of Microsoft, I would definitely recommend the Office 365 um, developer subscription. So each Power App and Power Automate licensing have a Power Apps per app plan and a Power Apps per user plan. And same thing with Power Automate. Power Automate per user plan, Power Automate per flow plan. So the one that I am most uh, accustomed to is actually for Power Apps is the Power App per user plan. With my organization, we have over 1,000 uh, users of of Office 365 and so per user we get a lot of um, power app capacity um, with our Office 365 licensing but for those complex ones we sometimes use a SQL connector and so for everyone who's using that power app to write to SQL the creator and the users need the premium licensing capacity of the Power Apps per user plan. So it, it can get pretty expensive, but for our COVID apps, uh, we had to do it. Um, so we had some apps used using COVID data. Um, and so everyone who was using those Power Apps needed the Power Apps uh, per user uh, capacity. Um, so you do see the Power Apps per app plan and that comes with two apps and a single portal. And when it says two apps, I'm pretty sure that is actually a maximum of two apps for a specific business. Yeah, so which allows individual users to run applications, two apps and a single portal. So you only get two apps and a single portal for a business scenario based on full capabilities of Power Apps. Uh, this is an easy way to get started with Power Apps if you wanted to uh, just kind of play around with Power Apps. Although I don't agree. I think the developer licensing model is the best way to get a few people in your organization uh, started with Power Apps. So uh, now we have a uh, Power Automate per user plan. So this is also the one that I am most accustomed to um, with Office 365, you know, we have over a thousand users with the Office 365. Uh, we actually have the E3 licensing model. And so Microsoft has told us that you know, the way we have it right now, we have almost infinite number of flows unless people were to create um, flows that ran infinitely. So with over a thousand users in the Office 365 E3 licensing model, um, people can create flows without premium connectors just infinitely. Um, if you need the premium plans, you know, you can move up to the uh, per app, per user plan with the premium licensing capacity. And then you also have the power app per flow plan. Um, to me, I don't know how, I guess a small organization could use this. You know, it starts with um, $500 a month for five flows. And you know, five flows come quickly, right? But I guess, you know, some people could use that, uh, use that plan. Why else would um, Microsoft have it? So let's go ahead and get into the, um, the FAQ. Oh yeah, before we get into the, the FAQ, um, let's talk about the limitations of using the government licensing model. So I am familiar with the government licensing model. Um, in the GCC plans, um, things come out much slower and sometimes even a year later. So uh, Microsoft does have to meet the, you know, the government uh, regulations. And because of that, um, many of the connectors, um, many features, the preview features are not coming out to the GCC um, licensing uh, model as fast as the enterprise version. So um, just be careful with the, the GCC model. Um, 
expect that you know if you see something like AI Builder that's coming out and Microsoft uh, gives you information in Microsoft Ignite and then you go to them and they say oh well that's not available for the government yet so you know you might have to wait a year until you can actually use that feature so you can uh, see um, you know embed in Power BI is not available um, to add apps to teams it's not there yet um, many of the connectors are not uh, in the GCC yet um, the AI builder and geospatial features are not available in the government licensing model yet I'm gonna go through a few of the uh, FAC uh, frequently asked questions from Power Apps and Power Automate um, so how is Microsoft Power Apps and Power Automate licensed? We did go through this. Um, it's either per app plan or per user plan. What license must be assigned to a guest so they can run a Canvas app shared with them? The guest user must have its own Power Apps license. Now actually what I've figured out is that the guest user could have his own Power Apps license from a different tenant and that could work. So it could be the tenant hosting the app being shared or the home tenant of the guest user so either way um, if the if the guest user has a power apps license in a different tenant it can get access to your canvas app externally so there was a change on uh, December 2020 um, that did happen I'm not even going to go through the differences is there a plan for developers yes this is what I was talking about um, this is the plan that I have when you involve Microsoft you can mix and match licenses like some people can have an Office 365 regular license some people can have the premium license to capacity uh, this is where it gets very complex very quickly um, there are trial licenses um, you can try them for you know 90 days uh, the Dataverse the Dataverse is included with Power Apps and Power Automate uh, plans the Dataverse is the new name of what Microsoft used to have as the common data service um, one thing about the Dataverse is let's say you create a power app on the Dataverse and then it's deleted you can restore that power app it's the only way a power app can be restored is if it is using the Dataverse um, Dataverse for Teams is coming that's new I don't have much experience with it but um, you could learn about that if you'd like with portals um, portals is a whole different licensing model you know you have um, it's based on uh, capacity, you know, how many logins you have into your portal. So, you know, external users, you have a hundred thousand page views for a hundred dollars. AI Builder is very new to me. If anyone is interested in that, they could uh, come to this. I will add this uh, site to the description of the video. And pretty much that's it. Um, if you really want to get down to it, I do recommend uh, going to the uh, PDF uh, right here. This PDF is super helpful. It gets very complex. It, it was updated this month. Um, you do have a table of contents. Um, but uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have more questions, uh, please let's discuss in the uh, comments section. Once again, I am not a licensing expert. And normally anyone who tells you they are a licensing expert is probably not. Um, the licensing model changes very quickly. There are a few people at Microsoft that can help you. But um, if you would like to discuss or talk more about licenses, uh, feel free in the comments section. Hopefully this video is helpful. Thank you for watching.